bringing the phone. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. Folks, this morning I was on Instagram and I came across this video by Jamal, Pastor Jamal Bryant of New Birth Baptist Church in Atlanta uh, dealing with the whole issue of testing. Check this out. I've been on three conference calls this morning, uh, one of which with uh, Elder Stokes. And uh, in order for us to administer it, we need a local hospital uh, and clinic to partner with us. Uh, as of two minutes before this call, we've had the third hospital decline us uh, because their staff is uh, far grossly overstretched uh, and they don't have the capacity. One doctor even uh, lamenting that they're having to sleep in their cars outside of the hospital. Uh, so really want to charge and challenge you to lift up uh, the prayers of our health care providers as well as I uh, pray that God will uh, give to us a ram in the bush uh, so that we might be able to better serve the greater DeKalb uh, community. Uh, I'm working tirelessly to try to fill in the blanks and the connect the dots, believing that God's going to uh, provide us with who and what it is that we need so that we can uh, minister to the larger community. But this is really a pronounced time for us for uh, prayer and supplication uh, to really reach out to God for his intervention because if this is where we are at the closure of week one, uh, by the time we get to week four, uh, it's going to be a dizzying reality uh, for all of us. And so I ask that uh, we would all keep uh, not just washing our hands, but that we'll keep our hearts pure and that we don't become contaminated with the stains of bad news that we're being inundated with uh, every day on television and social media, uh, but that you would consecrate yourselves in seasons of prayer and supplication and hearing and that uh, you would really commit yourself uh, to the intermittent uh, fasting journey that the church is on on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I appreciate uh, all of you and uh, I'm grateful uh, that God has kept us together and looking forward to building uh, even in these dire times. Joining us live right now is Pastor Jamal Bryant. Uh, you talked about receiving those 1,000 tests. Have you been able to connect with any uh, local hospitals to help administer these tests? Uh, Roland, like most of your viewers, I've been watching the news and really didn't understand how dire the circumstance is until I started seeking out partnership. Uh, all of uh, your doctors would support that it really impacts those who have a compromised immune system but what nobody is putting together is that Atlanta leads the nation in HIV and AIDS. And so our numbers are through the roof, but they're not being shown because we don't have the testing. I've got uh, a thousand uh, approved uh, COVID testing, but in order to uh, seal the chain, uh, I need a hospital or a clinic to partner with us. We've now uh, talked to four hospitals and all of them are stretched uh, way beyond capacity. And so there's a whole lot going on uh, that's not being reported or shown in black and brown communities. Where the tests, where the tests come from? Say it again. Uh, the tests you received, where do they come from? Yes, it came from uh, a private clinic in uh, Kissimmee, Florida. I donated for the last two, last week, uh, Roland, I uh, opened up a food pantry in Atlanta uh, for people to just pull in their cars, pop their trunk. We put groceries in it. Uh, and usually we did it for 300 a month. Since the coronavirus, uh, we've been having to do it almost 300 people a day. Wow. Uh, so wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so somebody saw, like you on Instagram, us doing the work uh, and said, we want to partner with you because we see you uh, in the community and believe that you'll, you'll be a blessing. Uh, when you talk about the situation in Atlanta, uh, of course, Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms had tweeted the other day uh, that Atlanta hospitals were almost at, were at their capacity when it came to I ICUs. Uh, yes. When you talk about, uh, again, uh, HIV there in Atlanta, the issue that is still here is the fact that, again, that your church uh, getting these thousand tests is that this nation has been lagging behind in testing. You got Donald Trump at the White House uh, patting himself on the back every day saying how great uh, things are and how we're leading everybody else in testing. But if you look at uh, per one million, we're way behind South Korea and other countries when it comes to testing the citizens. Uh, while you were talking to President Howard, a uh, flash just came on CNN uh, that we've had over 284 deaths just in one day, uh, catapulting us to being the first 
uh, in the world in terms of deaths. And the way that this president is not leading uh, is only going to get more dire uh, as the days go by. So if you can imagine uh, that all of the beds in Atlanta are filled and rolling, we haven't even reached the peak. They're suggesting that the peak isn't even going to come to the third or fourth week of April. Uh, but if this is where we are, where people don't have food, record number of unemployment filings, the hospitals are already at full capacity. Uh, the mayor of Stonecrest, which is a, a suburb of Atlanta, where my church is located, has uh, offered up a full warehouse uh, to hold uh, hospital beds. I, I think America is really in for a, a tremendously bad turn. Uh, when you talk about, uh, uh, my last question to you, impact on churches, obviously they cannot congregate. Uh, and we're talking about what's happening with restaurants and other businesses, but many of these churches are also being impacted as well because, like it or not, tithes and offerings, uh, people are having to move to uh, digital media as well. Uh, what, have been the, what have been the conversations like with some of your fellow pastors around the country or how they are now adjusting? We talk about how, how university and HBCUs have had to quickly adjust to online education same thing for a whole bunch of churches that are not mega churches not large churches they don't really have television media a, a whole lot of things are going to happen roland if you would consider that if it takes 30 days to make a habit if 60 90 days i'm not used to going to church i'm watching online by the time we get to the summer we're going to have reverse missionaries trying to get saints to come back to church because they're used to just watching it mobily. Uh, so that's in one compartment. The other one is if culture changes every four years, rolling church culture changes every 15 years. So most churches are 10 years behind. Uh, you text me from time to time with concern about churches you see randomly streaming and how the camera's off, the lighting is <laughs> off, or they, they're doing it wrong. So imagine those who don't even have that level of equipment uh, are really suffering and nobody is thinking about these full-time pastors uh, who are really finding themselves in dire straits. Uh, well, look, we certainly uh, send our hearts and prayers out to them. Uh, and one of the things that we'll be doing uh, tomorrow, so let all the church folks know tomorrow, uh, on tomorrow's show, I'm bringing in a, a lot of my stuff and we're gonna do it, actually go through and explain to folks how they could actually stream oh, okay. church uh, yes. how pastors can learn how to actually do Bible study right yes. from the house. Uh, and so we're going to take them through the low end to the high end. That's going to be on tomorrow's show. Roland, if you do this, you don't even know you're going to be a bishop by Sunday. A whole <laughs> lot of teachers going to be under you. Uh, Thank well, you well, for helping the church. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thanks a bunch, Pastor Jamal Bryant. Thanks a lot. I want to go quickly go back to my panel here. Reese, I mean, to, 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 to hear that, you get a thousand tests, but they can't even use them because the hospitals are so swamped. Yet we 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 saw Donald Trump stand in, in Rose Garden with CVS, Walmart, Walgreens, all those folks tout, oh, we're gonna have parking lot testing, drive-through testing. Ain't a damn thing happened since that news conference. It's 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 bullshit. It's nothing but propaganda. It goes back to what I was just saying. We can't trust anything that this administration is saying. And it really makes me wonder, is how is this something that's intentional? I mean, I understand the fact that the hospitals are stretched, but also, you know, there are hospitals that are that are actually conducting tests that CDC is refusing to even process. And so how the hell are we supposed to get to a solution that involves testing and surveillance and antibodies and all sorts of kind of stuff if the administration, if the CDC won't test people, if the hospitals do not have the capacity to test people? And at the same time, we have Dr. Briggs and, and Donald Trump and, and Mike Pence sitting up there saying everything is going along swimmingly well. It's, it's, it's so infuriating. And I have to salute Pastor Jamal Bryant. I mean, it's heartbreaking to just hear these on the ground reports, which again is such a disconnect between what is being reported out of the White House. And like I said, even from some of these governors to go from 300 people a month to 300 people a day is staggering. And salute to, like I said, Pastor Bryant and the churches and the organizations that are stepping up to the plate to really help those in need. But we have to start getting to a point to where we really understand what's going on on the ground. And I have to echo what Dr. Carr says all the time, that is the importance of 
roll up our unfiltered what you do here Roland, so that we can really get the truth of what's happening particularly in our communities because right now we're not getting it great and I, go, go, as we, yeah. know, we can't help if we don't get what the truth is we can't prepare ourselves we cannot fight this if we're not getting the truth greg i just got a tweet from this sister who follows me henry go to my ipad veronica t williams goes by divatologist this is what she tweeted i'm an rn at one of dc's biggest hospitals i work on a surgical floor that is now taking COVID 19 patients we are scared supplies are limited we have positive uh, patients on our unit i'm home coughing my manager said I won't be tested for COVID-19. Brother, look, Wayne, Wayne was being, uh, he's always upbeat. His, his Jegna, his mentor used to talk about equanimity under duress. He was being, he told the truth, but he was being most upbeat. This is what we're hearing from all the healthcare providers. I'm telling you, man, in Atlanta, my, my friends who teach at uh, Morehouse School of Medicine, they're seeing the same thing. The hospitals, we really don't know where we are with this. And as you led at the top of the show, the United States today passed China and passed Italy as the most infected nation. And as Jamal Bryant said, Brother Bryant, we're not even near the top of this curve. Now, let me let me just pause here for a moment, though, brother, because I, I love that outfit you got on that black and gold. But, I, <laughs> and, you know, I was going to say that. But in terms of injecting a little levity, when you said you're going to bring all the stuff in to help show people how to watch church, I finally, for the first time, found out how they make bishops in the modern black church. But at any rate, <laughs> uh, that haven't been said. Um, <laughs> to, to the point, brother, this is really showing federalism. All you high school teachers teaching civics out there, here's the lesson for your young people who are at home. Tell them to watch Roland Martin Unfiltered. Tell them to read the newspaper if they can find, get it online or to watch television and find out the relationship between local, state, and federal government. The federal government is not working right now. This $2 trillion piece of legislation is the first thing that's going to intervene in your local life. There is no president of the United States coordinating anything. The man is obsessed and he's and, and then he brings on Mike Pence to put a white enamel over varnish over his rotting brain. At the state level, you've got governors lining up trying to intervene for the people who live in their state borders, but they're being forced in some ways to fight each other. The headline of today's New York Times state versus state as governors limit limit visitors if wherever you are the reason new orleans is skyrocketing now is because that black leadership in that black city is taking charge and saying we got to test these people but what is it going to do it's going to overwhelm the hospitals in the city of new orleans we have to now pull together and make real demands on elected leadership this is why it's important to participate in politics and to organize at wherever you are. If you're worried about being evicted and your landlord is a private owner of the building, organize with the other people in your building and send that landlord a letter and say, look, we can't pay and it does no good for you to put us out. Everybody can do something. It's very important now to understand this is not the time to turn inward and just isolate, not just physically, but intellectually, culturally, socially, even though we're apart from each other physically, it's time to pull together socially. And that doesn't start with Donald John Trump, who's wandered off into his own fever dream. It starts with the people watching this and the people who are going to talk to the other people. We've got to organize and it begins with you. All right. Amen. Also, that's a fly shirt you got on, too. Oh, so don't act, don't, act, it, don't, act like, don't act like it's not good. All right, y'all. <laughs> we're going to a break. Panelists, hold tight one second. I got to go to a break. All y'all who are watching, don't turn away. Mental health for African-Americans is critically important dealing with coronavirus. We'll talk to an expert next discussing that. And also, y'all see that viral video of the brother from Baltimore who's a reporter in Montana, and that was a herd of bison that was, on, that was coming his way, and it was not a group of Howard University women, and homeboy booked out of there. We're going to talk to him right here in Roller Martin Unfiltered. All right, folks, got to go to a break. You're watching the live is the black is the most unapologetic show that's on the, on the digital spectrum. This is what we do every single day because we're about speaking to you. You're watching Roller Martin Unfiltered. Back in a moment.